Pleasure to take it from here. I'm also joined by my colleague Shivaru. He's joining us in India today's war room. And uh, both of us are connecting once again to Kira Rudik, Ukrainian MP. Kira, great to have you back. I hope you're safe uh, uh, and all is well with you. First up, Kira, the information that is uh, filtering in, huge strategic gain by Russia from their side, taking over the nuclear plant in Zaporizhia. What your president has warned is a possible nuclear disaster 100 times Chernobyl. Uh, correct. Uh, Putin is moving forward. Russian uh, army is trying to get into all our cities and we are protecting them. However, we do need the protection from the air. We need a no-fly zone because if we don't get it, then uh, there will be no, uh, no way to contradict Putin in the air. And we will see more and more uh, situations like happened this night when he was trying to take over and he's taking over the nuclear plant right now. So we as people who survived Chernobyl and who know, who know how, uh, how difficult it is and how tra tragic that is, we know that radiation doesn't care what passport the person has, doesn't care about uh, the borders and who is in the EU and who is in NATO. The radiation doesn't care about all of this. And Putin is completely crazy because he is threatening and he was attacking the nuclear plant. It was not by mistake. It was not unintentional. He knew what he was doing and his army knew what they were shooting. So he was he basically provo could provoke the, another nuclear crisis, another nuclear explosion in the center of Europe. The Zaporizhia uh, nuclear plant is uh, the largest nuclear plant in the Europe. So, like when when uh, NATO allies are saying that they cannot close the skies for Ukraine, and everybody is afraid that the war will begin. So, what are you afraid more of? That Putin will create a, it will um, create the explosion that will affect everybody, or that, that there will be a potential threat from him. And I think that right now everybody needs to accept the harsh truth. The war has already began, and it began with more than Russia versus Ukraine. This is the uh, the truth about the uh, new larger war where everybody is involved. So the Western countries should stop condemning Russia and saying, "Oh, we will make you a new and you end note on like how you should stop doing." And Putin doesn't care about that. He really does not. You have seen no normal person, no country at, at uh, war would ever attack nuclear plant because they know that it will, uh, first of all, have the results on their own citizens. And Putin doesn't care about his citizens. He's just saying, OK, go ahead, burn it. Uh, Kira, uh, by taking control of the Zaporizhia nuclear facility, uh, is, is Putin and the Russian army you know, looking to gain more leverage because uh, if they've taken control of Europe's largest nuclear facility, they control, uh, you know, uh, in many ways what happens next in the war because your country gets 50% or 25% at least of its electricity and power from this one facility. Right. And this is, this is why have, we have been asking for a no-fly zone over Ukraine, because we are able to fight Putin to a certain extent. And right now he will be threatening not only Ukraine, he will be threatening the whole world by, by taking this nuclear plant. Kira, what, what, yeah, go, go ahead, Shep, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Priti, go ahead. Kira, the very fact that there was a fire at the plant uh, last night, Russia has blamed Ukraine for that. And, you know, well, that Russia could lead to disastrous circumstances. Oh, okay, so Russia is bombing uh, our plant and then blaming us for that. So, like, does it sound uh, crazy for you? Like, this is, uh, this is exactly what Putin is doing. He is coming with his troops. Russia has called it, Kira, I'm sorry to come in, but Russia has called it a monstrous provocation with what happened last night there. Oh, okay, so Russia brought their troops. Russia is attacking us for nine days, and now they're saying we are doing some provocations. I think it's a crazy statement and it should not be repeated. Kira, you know, uh, the, the Zaporizhia facility uh, contains uh, six, uh, six reactors. Ukraine has four different nuclear sites for a total of 15 nuclear facilities, uh, you know, that provide half of your country's electricity. 
with what has happened in Zaporizhia, do you think there could be a risk to some of the other facilities as well, uh, you know, in places like uh, Rivne and, uh, uh, you know, the South Ukraine? There are many facilities there. Could they be at risk as well? Yes, I'm sure that they would be at risk. Russia is attacking us from all sides and we will be fighting it for as long as it takes. But I want to say it again and again and again that mm -hmm. they are providing a threat for the whole world not only to Ukraine, for the whole world. And there will be no difference if it's Poland or Lithuania or Switzerland. Everybody will be affected. And Putin is crazy and he's moving forward and he's doing whatever, uh, whatever it takes to conquer Ukraine. And Eva, we will be fighting because it's our land, but we will not let him, we will not let him into our cities. However, there will, he is possessing a threat right now to the whole humanity. Kira, the fact that there was a fire there, uh, I want to ask you, has there been any readings of uh, elevated radiation around the area? Not right now. Right now, uh, the elevated readings are not confirmed and we did not receive any, uh, any additional information from our stations like uh, throughout Ukraine that would confirm that. You know, Kira, uh, uh, I think one of the grids, because uh, there was some minor damage to an auxiliary building to one of the reactor complexes, and therefore, for safety reasons, one of the grids has been taken, one of the units has been taken off the grid right now. The question that, uh, you know, I'm sure uh, uh, your country's leaders will be facing right now is the possibility of, uh, uh, you know, a clampdown on your energy sources, whether it is nuclear, whether it is your thermal power stations, where there has been an airstrike, uh, you know, in the, uh, 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 in the Oktirka area, if I'm not mistaken, earlier today. Uh, is there a possibility that the invading forces will be looking to create some kind of a clampdown on energy, blackouts in cities possibly, to speed up domination of the country? Uh, this strategy is possible and it comes along with what Putin planned to have uh, and to do is to siege the cities. It will, the turning off electricity would definitely be part of, of this strategy. We know that. Ha has it, has uh, it been experienced anywhere in cities? We've seen that happening in places like Kharkiv and Kherson as well. Is that something that could be experienced in Kyiv as well? Uh, we will defend Kiev with our blood, so we hope that it will not happen here in Kiev. However, again, there is no good outcome of what is going on right now if we are not getting the support from the West. You know, Kira, that's what I want to touch on about, because, uh, you know, if I just have to quote your president, Mr. Zelensky, he said that this... Uh, with what is happening right now in this nuclear facility uh, with Russia uh, taking it over could be the end of Europe. Uh, this is the evacuation of Europe. You're trying clearly. Uh, there is an attempt uh, and understandably, you know, we understand the urgency of it to expand, uh, you know, the crisis there. Does Ukraine feel net down by European countries? Does Ukraine feel net down by NATO, by the West? Because other than possibly giving you arms, there's not much that the West or NATO has done till now. I'm very sure and I'm, I have talked to many of my uh, fellow parliamentarians and leaders of the world and uh, generals that NATO and European Union at some point will come to the decision to support Ukraine. My, uh, my fear is that it will be too late. And that's why I'm urging everybody who is responsible for making this decision to make it mm -hmm. rather earlier than later. So Condemnation you, of Putin is not helping out. So Ukraine does somewhere down the line then feel let down by NATO and the West? And no, we don't, feel, we don't feel let down. We are pushing right now for the right decisions to happen because we all know that the only way to fight Putin and win uh, the war would be to do it together not alone. What happens next in the city of Kyiv, especially, uh, um, uh, uh, Kira? Because we understand that there have been some... Uh, uh, after a, a day of relative calm yesterday in Ukraine's capital, uh, while we were reporting from there, there were reports of cruise missile strikes maybe about 20, 30 kilometers outside the city. Uh, are you seeing an elevated... Are you hearing about an elevated number of attacks in and around Kyiv now? Some neighborhoods have been reduced to rubble. Um, so the, the era, there have been missile attacks uh, throughout the Kyiv and uh, throughout the surroundings as well. We mm. know that. 
Uh, however, we are getting ready for a siege for uh, the, the city will be surrounded and we are right now preparing the food, the medical aid, etc. Kira, you know, Ukraine's nuclear facilities were a main point of concern even nine days back when this invasion started to happen with the first two days now. At that point of time, there were many warnings which were, uh, you know, sounded off by your own president, uh, by your own uh, foreign minister, by your own defense minister, talking about these very nuclear establishments which are right now under Russian control. How does the war change from here for you now? Because that's happened with what you said nine days ago. Yeah, well, we are, uh, we will, our strategy will not change. We continue to fight for our land. What we are saying to the world is Putin is not only our problem. He will create an issue. He already creates issue for all the countries in the world. Do you think India is very far away? If there will be a huge, huge, huge nuclear explosion? I don't think so. I think every country will feel the, uh, the result because it will be ecological catastrophe ecological catastrophe will, which will have a huge impact on the whole world and that's why what we are trying to prevent it we were trying to prevent it and we are fighting with it with all our lives and uh, right now what we need and the help and support from all the countries in the world not only saying oh we condemn Putin he's such a bad boy but the support in terms of providing the forces to fight him to fight him here okay. on our to destroy our cities, to kill our people. But we are ready to do it and we are fighting him. So why does the world care less about what's going to happen to them? Kira, is now a direct appeal going to NATO, to EU, to the West to put boots on ground? Right, yes, this is what's, what's happening. But we want to start with the no-fly zone to help our army to fight back. But you think that's going to be the next big appeal? To send forces to Ukraine to fight yes. Russia? That's the yes. next step. All right. Shiv, do you have a question or should we move on? No, no, I think we can move on now. Thank you very much, uh, Kira, for joining Thank us uh, on that uh, big developing story. Preeti, uh, you know, the, uh, 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 by seven or eight days ago, if someone had said that the nuclear bogey is thick and right in front of our eyes, I think most people would have dismissed it and said it's an overreaction. Just look at how things have escalated in the last four days, Preeti. Well, you're completely right. Uh